This is a video of confession. I want to be completely honest with you about the overwhelm that happens before I start a project and the procrastination that happens as a result of that and the insecurities that I face in the middle of a project. No matter how many projects I finish or videos that I make, it's still hard and I get that. My name is BJ, my business is called Junked Up, and let's get started on today's project. There's always a rush of excitement when I get a project piece and my head starts swimming with all the ideas and things that I want to do to it. And then reality sets in, that I have repairs to make, like on this little cabinet where I had a piece of missing trim and a door that didn't want to stay closed and then a door when it was open was open too far and just all the things. And so this cabinet sat in my workspace for weeks before I actually started it. But I did start it and I managed to finish it. So let me walk you through the process. First, we clean, making sure to finish up with a clean water rinse to make sure that there's no residue left on the project. Then I'm on to the repairs. And really, these repairs were not hard. It was just the fact that I had to do them, which was holding me back. To repair that piece of missing trim, I'm using quick wood, which is a two-part putty epoxy. So you just mash it up in your hands until it's all mixed together in a uniform color. I rolled mine out into a snake so that I could stretch it across the length of that missing section. You basically just mold it into the shape that you need. I needed a little channel in there to mimic the molding, so I just used the end of my paint key to do that. And then once it's dry, it's super hard, and you can sand it to make sure it's smooth and I don't have any rough edges. So the one thing I was certain about was I knew I wanted to use a piece from the new bungalow transfer from IOD, so I based all of my color choices on that. So I'm starting with a base coat of Kissing Booth, to which I am adding Salt Wash. This is a powdered paint additive. I would suggest doing it in the reverse that I'm doing it and add your powder to the paint versus adding the paint to the powder. I don't know why I chose to do it that way. Again, I'm doubting myself, but in the end it all worked out. I didn't measure. There are directions on the can. You should read those directions and measure. I didn't bother. I never bother, it's just the way I roll. And then I end up with a mess like this, and I was running out of paint, so just one more thing to be overwhelmed about, right? So I just added a little bit of water to the rest of that kissing booth, dumped it in the bowl, and it was perfect. I am using a stippling or pouncing motion to put that paint and salt wash mixture on because I really want to highlight the texture and that's the best way to use salt wash is to just go ahead and pounce it on. You want to resist the urge to smooth it all out. You want the texture. And all this texture is going to make a lot more sense as we progress through the project. So once that base coat of Kissing Booth is all dry, I'm going to do some blending. I'm going to start by using this beautiful green called Monet's Garden. All the paint is from DIY paint. I'm just using regular traditional brush strokes on this one. Nothing fancy, no stippling or pouncing, just getting the paint on. So the next color I chose was Salty Kiss. I thought this was a good complement to the Monet's Garden. And I'm just gonna put that onto the next section. I kind of think about my blending in sections when I want an ombre effect, and that's what I'm doing here. So I'm just taking that Salty Kiss and I'm blending it right into the Monet's Garden. You will notice I am not using water. The reason I'm not using water is I really don't wanna reactivate that kissing booth because I don't wanna mix the greens in with that pink because that would just be a disaster. <laughs> Not stressing out too much about the blending process because I know that the transfer is gonna go in that middle panel right there, and so you won't see a lot of this. And this is a textured finish anyway, and so it doesn't need to be super smooth and this really great transition. It's okay. This is one of the points in the project where that self-doubt creeps in, and that little voice that says, you don't know what you're doing. This is gonna be really bad. Why are you doing this? Why are you even trying to make a video out of this? It's gonna be terrible. 
The important thing is to just silence that voice, push that self-doubt to the side, and keep progressing. So the next kind of tier that I'm gonna do here is a lighter, more chartreuse yellow green. So I mixed up Salty Kiss with some liquid sunshine, and I did throw just a little bit of the Bohemian Bright in there, that yellow color. I don't think you necessarily need it. You'll notice I sprayed a little bit of water and that's because my Salty Kiss was really dry at that point. So I just sprayed a little band of water so that I could blend this next color that I mixed into that Salty Kiss. So the technique with the paper, mine is just packing paper. It really is a thing. It's called frotage if you're interested. I didn't invent this. It's an actual technique that people use. I don't even know if I'm doing it right, but that's what it is. It takes some of the paint off, moves color around, and helps soften some of the blending lines. So I knew I wanted the top of the cabinet to be a little more yellow, actually a lot more yellow. So I'm going in with some straight up liquid sunshine. I didn't mix it with anything. It's just liquid sunshine straight out of the can. I am using a pouncing motion to kind of really blend that into the paint color that was there. And I feel like I can kind of start to see it come together. Trust me, I still have my doubts. And here I am again with more paper, trying to do more of this frotage thing because I just don't know what else to do. Sometimes you just have to try things. You've no idea if they're gonna work or not, but you just have to give it a go. Let's look at the side of the cabinet where I think that frotage was a little bit more effective. You can see where I really moved color around. There's some of that dark green in the yellow, there's some of the yellow in the dark green. That's all from just moving that paper around. I had a hint of yellow paint left on my brush and on that plate, so I'm just dry brushing to pull some of that yellow down to the bottom. So here's another moment of just pushing the voices to the side, the ones that say, you have no idea what you're doing. I can't say I always know what I'm doing. A lot of this I just do intuitively, or I've seen other people do it, and I just have to trust myself and trust the process. I'm using the scraper to take off those chunks of salt wash that we put on in the beginning. I told you it was all gonna make sense. And what that's doing is exposing all of that kissing booth that was mixed with the salt wash under there. There is absolutely no right way or wrong way to do this. I just kept chipping at it until I liked the way it looked. I did decide to give it just a very light sanding to smooth out any rough spots that I missed or remove any chunks that I missed. I feel it gives a little dicey there for a moment, but now is about the time in the project. It's like the turning point. I can sort of see it all coming together. So in preparation to put my transfer on, I'm gonna go ahead and seal up that center panel with some big top, especially since I sanded it. I don't want any of that sanding dust to interfere with my transfer sticking. I let that big top dry overnight to make sure it's really good and dry. And then I basically just dry fit the transfer, making sure that I like the placement of everything, cutting it off where I need to so that it'll fit that center panel. I removed the backing sheet, place it on, and here goes nothing. I was asked the question by someone if I had any trouble getting the transfer to stick because I'm on a textured surface, and I'm happy to report that I had no problems whatsoever. Now, I'm a slow and steady transfer application kind of person. I don't like to rush the process or pull it. I find that if I can get a little bit of air under there while I'm giving it some rubbing, it works best. I do have a little space in there that I don't like, and so I'm just gonna use a piece that I had cut off earlier. I can use that little piece of leaf and I just cut it out, place it on, and I'm good to go, and I filled in an empty space. I kind of tinkered with whether to add more, and I, was, I realized I was fighting with myself, so I just stopped where I was and didn't add any more. Then I just give the transfer an all over burnishing just using the plastic carrier sheet that the transfer was on. And for the finishing, it's finally time to finish this up. I'm gonna use clear wax. I toyed with the idea of also using some dark or black wax, but in the end, I decided I didn't need it. I just wanna point out that you'll notice that as I apply that clear wax over the sides where I did not have the big top, there's a significant color change. 
the color change already happened in that center panel when I applied the big top, so that's why it looks different. That wax will all dry and everything will look uniform, I promise. I do love the way the colors just wake up and become so intense with the application of that wax. I let my wax dry overnight and then I come back the next day and I buff it with a clean soft cloth. You'll notice there's just a little bit of color transfer as you're buffing. That is perfectly normal and nothing to worry about. We often don't share the little nitty gritty details of projects, but I do wanna share that I go ahead and I clean everything up. I want this to be professional looking. So I used my scraper and a damp rag to clean up that whole inside area so I didn't have paint where it wasn't supposed to be. My cabinet on the inside was super thirsty. I used some Danish oil because that's what I had on hand just to rejuvenate that wood and make it all nice and clean and pretty on the inside since it's nice and pretty on the outside. I really hope that the next time you're starting a project and you're procrastinating because you feel overwhelmed and there's just too much to do and we have to do all the things and we have to clean it and prep it and fix it, just breathe. Know that we all experience that. Well, maybe not all of us, but that a lot of us, even those of us that have been doing this for a long time, also experience that same thing. And the important part is to just take that first step and to start. And then when you have those moments of self-doubt, just put them to the side, trust the process, and most importantly, trust yourself. As always, thank you so much for your support and for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.